Welcome everybody to The Art of Comics. I'm your host, Andres Salazar, comic book aficionado, writer-creator of such classics as Pariah, Missouri, and The Adventure Bear Squad. <laughs> and now we're doing the ultimate last part four episode of Incal by Hodorowsky and Mobius. Are you ready? Um, it's been a few weeks coming. I just finished this a couple hours ago, and I want to just get this done. Uh, and I'll be honest with you, this felt a little bit like homework, this last section. Uh, and I'll just give you my quick thoughts here, okay, about Inkal. It's a visual feast. Visual feast. I really enjoyed the art. I love the science fiction-y, fantasy worlds. I like all that. The plot, the actual like A to B to C that is very murky, muddy, and confusing. It is kind of this road adventure, you know? It's kind of like you're doing a little tour. Um, It's just, it's just convoluted. And it's hard to really figure it out. There are themes in here. There are spiritual themes. There's, there's, there's kind of a mysticism about this, which I appreciate. I appreciate that this is not just a surface thing, but that, that there's more to this. That there's, you know, that, that Horoski is saying something about divinity within us about being one with yourself, about love conquering all, like the damn Beatles song. I get all that, I appreciate all that, but it is hard for me to digest. To be honest, it's just, um, they're, they're brilliant sections, brilliant things, but a lot of that's visually based. Story-wise, it's just freaking kind of crazy. Uh, <laughs> Uh, this needs one of those companion books, like, uh, you know, I have From Hell, and there's a big From Hell companion book that's like, you know, the letters of Alan and, and um, uh, Campbell talking and everything, and kind of breaking down the story and stuff. And there's also one of those for Mouse. Uh, there's a, like a companion book of Mouse. Uh, I have both of those. There needs to be a companion of this, and maybe there is, because... Um, there's just a lot of crap going on here that is confusing. I like the world building stuff, but just like, for a guy, I mean, there's more meditation in this book. You have the heroes meditate more in a semicircle than any other comic. And the fact that you could pull that off and make it visually interesting is kudos to the freaking artist. And I do think this book should be read by everyone, especially those who are interested in creating comics. I think that it is a master class uh, of drawing and of originality and of imagination. But if I were to pull out the themes and pull out kind of the plot elements, it gets complicated. It gets weird and hard to kind of like digest. And to be honest, a lot of it I keep thinking of Dune. I keep thinking of, you know, he couldn't make Dune, so he's coming up with this like, Dune adjacent that he's doing that is somehow his own philosophy mixed with some of the visual style of Herbert, but then just like, who knows what, right? So that's my like quick take. As I've done the three previous episodes, let's do the deep dive, let's look at it, let's study it, let's chit chat about it. Comment on the video what you think, um, and we'll do more. Okay, here we go. Let's flip. Okay, everybody, let's check this out. You know what? I want to say real quick, thank you for watching. Thank you for spending your time with me. I know there's a lot of people that cover this uh, topic, you know, that cover comics and uh, those that are much more uh, established than myself. So I appreciate you uh, spending some time with me. 
and chit-chatting about this. Uh, I think it's valuable. Uh, I learn a lot from it, but I'm, I'm grateful that you guys watch. So thanks a lot, man. Just there you go. Kudos to you. And while you're at it, subscribe. Okay. Uh, <laughs> here we go. We're doing the last section here. Uh, Vitalville H2O, uh, I'm assuming some kind of Latin, the living water or water, water live water, something like that. Um, okay. I really like the colors. Have we talked about the colors, how, how wonderful they are? Um, again, here we see again, this is the story of our little intrepid heroes, this little band of people coming across the next world, right? The next kind of strange, strangeness. And so this is like a, a water place, land. Uh, we get these medusas that um, have this kind of a um, guide that's part of them. And these medusas are gonna be critical for how they're gonna destroy the shadow egg and those kind of techno priests and stuff. Um, just beautiful, beautiful rendering. I just really like the simplistic um, stuff that Mobius is doing here. I also really appreciate just the really fun, organic kind of like creatures and, and stuff like this. I just, this looks really cool, man. This is a great page here. Yeah, now we're getting into the, the mega holiness, the, um, Empress, which is this hermaphroditic, her, her, hermaphrodite. Hermaphroditic, hermaphroditic, a hermaphrodite. Um, the dual personalities, and this is kind of going to those like uh, Eastern philosophy of you know, there's the, the male sphere or you know part of us. There's the female part of us, and this is kind of like getting into some of those kind of philosophical concepts. Um, just wonderful. Wonderful, really cool, imaginative, just drawing, interesting stuff. Um, and here's the the shadow egg, the evil, you know, techno priest evilness here. Brilliant stuff. So they're in the ink call. This is where the black ink call and the white ink call kind of came together. Um, it left uh, John DeFool's body. They're traveling. I love these spaceships. It's interesting. He'll do these like just a couple panels, then he'll just do a big, nice, big one and just like really image it up. Did anybody find out the size, the original size of these? Because um, these are all the same style. Later on, it kind of changes format. But these are all kind of the same kind of format. And I think this is magazine format, and that's why it feels a little weird on our like standard comic, comic book size. Um, do I have a normal comic here somewhere? Yeah, so say if we look at, if we look at Ronin, right? You can see how the magazine format looks like it's, uh, magazines are a little wider and shorter than the uh, than comic books, than uh, Western comics. So it's got that kind of magazine format, I'm pretty sure. I mean, I, it is, it's gotta be. Um, but yeah, I really like his technical little stuff. He does just a great job of uh, drawing the, the techie stuff as well as the organic. This kind of stuff is brilliant. Just the way he creates this illusion of space. Great, great perspective and stuff. So here, this the uh, president communicating with the bad guys. They're all bad guys at this point. Look at that. It's almost like a Ren tin, like a tin tin, kind of a, some of these little like drawings. Oh man, I love all those little like curves and stuff. Yeah, this is um the president is uh, kind of so this guy here, this like mintat, basically he's like a mintat. He even is like just like the mintats of. Um, Dune, and they're you know he knows he's gonna try to betray him. He's like, hey, if you're gonna try to betray me, we're gonna jack up your little niece, who we're gonna freeze her, and then we're gonna break little pieces of her because she's frozen, so she's really fragile. So they just broke off her freaking finger and said, that's how we're gonna torture you. You're gonna do what we say, 
and suck it up. This is a whole Dune thing too. This is, I mean, he even looks like freaking Baron Harkonnen. I mean, it's, uh, so they go to these Medusas. Oh man, look at this. Again, I just love all this like seaweed type of strange stuff. This underwater city. Look at that. And here's where we get to the Medusa. Okay, okay, another thing he does, he does wonderful stuff, is I love his um, crowds. Like when he draws crowds, it's just fabulous. I mean, look at this. First off, brilliant choice of coloring here to show the, um, the curvature of that. I mean, these contour lines are showing it too, but just brilliant stuff. And then look at all these little people here. It's so cool, it's just great. It's just really great. And the coloring is just right. They're only using like four colors. And they just do a couple of different ones in different spots. Really great faces and areas. Yeah, it's just great. So they're being attacked by the um, by the mutants. Look at these. Ah, oh, so good. Just great cartooning stuff, man. This is the stuff I, you know, I say you could just learn from. Just study it. You know, replicate some of it. Draw it, you know, in your own style, or just copy this and just kind of like figure out what he was doing. That's a great image too. He'll do these like great close-ups and then he'll boom out to this like beautiful panoramic, you know, wide, extra wide shot. Very cinematic kind of kind of feel to it. I mean, he had that history. He, he did, he was on board for a lot of cinema stuff. Yeah. Again, really love the faces. There's a simplicity to it, almost like a Monera type of a jive going, you know? That I really dig. All this cool aquatic things. Again, also, you know, I don't know if we talked about this before, but um, Miyazaki, uh, Miyazaki and Mobius were, were very close. Uh, they one of them named their daughter after the other. I think Miyazaki named his daughter after Mobius, if I'm not mistaken. It could have been the reverse, but um, there is every now and then I do see their style similar. There's some things that I see one of them do does that the other one. Does. If you look at, go back and look at Nausicaa, and you'll see how Nausicaa and and Mobius style. There's some similarities, which I think I think is fascinating because they're like totally different cultures and different parts of the world, and yet their style is different. He's being trained here. The Meta Baron, who of course we know is like the best warrior in the galaxy, is training John Defoe to be able to withstand like a certain level of combat, and so he's going through these little like robot combat exercises, you know, one through nine or whatever, and so he's getting up to level eight. Um, his girlfriend, Anima, is there. Brilliant stuff. This is, I really like this. Just, I love the, the, this is a great little image right there. Yeah, really, really kind of fun. You're almost gonna see like a Star Wars y thing into this. Like, I wonder if some of those guys study this too. I, I mean, I, I know they did. No question. I think everyone has. Here's the Bergs. They're gonna do the. Uh, yeah, this is the, the Bergs. They have this ritual where they get these armies of men to to run up the hill, and whoever's the one who gets to the top gets to have sex with the queen, and create like the new the new race or the new kind of human humanoid. And uh, John DeFool, of course, is in the mix. He's there with them, doesn't want to, but he's there with all these people and mutants and everybody. And uh, and the bur these uh, these the birds get to somehow like eat them, or you know they're gonna like take advantage of uh, 
of eating the remains. <laughs> it's kind of bizarre. Uh, look at the great face, though. So they do the charge and everything. And of course, John DeFool does a little, some trickery. Uh, uses his his powers to to fly up. He gets there, and he wins. He gets in this. He gets in the little like in the cap, and now he can make love. Who with to some kind of a blobby creature, uh, but she can shape shift like Odo from Star some Star Trek uh, Deep Space Nine, and so she morphs into who he loves, which is Anima. And so there we go. We got some boobs, and now she looks just like Anima. And then he's like, "Okay, I think I could do this now with her." And of course, she's like watching, and she's like, "No, dude, this sucks. It's a trap." So uh, they get it on, gooey style, impregnates her, spins his seed in her, which will then create this race. So it's, it's very kind of bizarre. It's, I mean, I keep saying bizarre. I mean, the whole thing is very, very different. I mean, you just have to go with it, right? You just kind of like say, hey, look, this is just kind of a wild, fun adventure. There you go. That's what we're going to do. The art's brilliant. It's beautiful. I love when he does this kind of like, almost like, uh, like, um, Robert Crumb, kind of cross contour stuff. That's a great image too. Yeah, look, see, that's a Karelian. That's a, looks like a like one of those uh, Mon Calamari ships, right? Doesn't that look like a Mon Calamari? Totally, dude. So he gets back to the ship. He's like, "Hey, man, it's all good." Uh, but. It wasn't real and he gets destroyed right yeah because she's she's he's so happy to see the real anima that the the blobby uh, princess whatever her empress uh, is just like oh yeah I'm gonna destroy you John and just like destroys him but don't worry he'll be back he is back he's recreated because Anima and Meta Baron do some meditating, right? Let's join our energies and bring back that idiot, John DeFool. And so they join their energies in some kind of a tantric type of deal, and then his body's back. And maybe it's because he had the incol in him. I'm not sure. It's just, you just go with it. You're like, okay, now he's back. It's like, you kill him, he's back. And he comes back reincarnated multiple times in this. I mean, you know. Uh, this is really cool. It's kind of like, oh, and so the techno priest just basically trashed up the empress. So now instead of, uh, you know, this hermaphroditic creature is now like all <laughs> jacked with a virus, the Tenebrae virus. Um, so now this is where it's interesting because we talked about magazine format and it's all this kind of like, you could tell this kind of big whites there. But now, this last half, this last section, it's totally changed. The fifth essence. Now, I don't, I'm assuming this is like printed differently, maybe at a different time. This could have been like later on. Does it say at all in here about the last, this last section? The fifth essence part two, Planet of Fool. Yeah, okay, dokie. Check it out. So the first printing, all this first sections were 82, 83, 85. And then this section two, this part here, the fifth essence is 88. So three years later, they go to this, now they go to this format. Notice it's like full paged out. I'm not sure if it's still in a magazine format or not. Maybe it is, but now he's bleed. He bleeds out to everything. It's different. It feels rushed too, especially the last say 50 pages. The art feels a little rushed. It just feels different. Just I don't know why. It just the the the, the page layout and the designs are different. 
cartoon is still brilliant though. Look at this, I love this image. What a great image that is. This reminds you of some Matrix type stuff. I mean, you know, all the all those guys, they went, this was this was in the, the everyone's library. So they have this deal where they have to like do this theta dream to kind of like get everyone to save the universe. So one of, you know, Hodorowski's deals is meditation and uh, connecting with the, the higher power and that's the only way to save yourself and save humanity and, and, and save the universe. And of course, John DeFool is the un, he is the character who is uninterested and unwilling participant of this whole thing. And he wants to just go off to, you know, some desert island with his girlfriend. And uh, he keeps getting roped into these, these activities. He uh, gets roped into all these saving the world, right? That was really great stuff. That's a good face too, and hands. That's Boba Fett Slave 1 right there, dude. Right there. You see that? That's a Boba Fett Slave 1. Put that in your pipe and smoke it. Um, love the coloring there. I mean, I don't even feel I can go, I can go through this beat by beat and tell you what's happening because it's just kind of crazy. This is a great page, but it is so different than anything he did before. Really just going out there, tilting everything. The borders are super small. Where I think he's always had gutters, right? Yeah, he always had gutters. All this has gutters. Now we don't use gutters. We're like, gutters, screw it. This is 1988. We're going hard. I love the silhouette stuff. This is fun. And it's all like, I guess it's not fully silhouetted. It's just like super dark. I don't know what you call that. Heavily sh shadowed. His, like, isometric drawings, the three, the, the you know, three dimensional perspective stuff that he's doing, the overhead, I love it. It's really good. He always draws this huge, he's a great to draw things very big, expansive, you know? He's great. So now we have the battle of Saloon, who's like the physical embodiment of the, of the Inkal, and also John DeFool's kid, biologically. And he's battling, you know, the the high priest of the technocrats or the, the techno priests and who's like the you know, the king of the shadow spider beast thing. So they're kinda like light and dark battling it. Oh, I had to show you this. This is like one of my favorite freaking panels of all time. Look at this. Ah I love this. This is like some Paul Pope right here. You know Paul Pope was looking at this and like, okay, that's how you do it, bro. Yeah, look at this, look at this. This whole page, dude, is epic. Oh my gosh, that's so good. That's so good, I love it. <laughs> I love it. Uh, this feels like a little phony it in, just the design, you know, but it is what it is. He battles ultimate darkness, so what can you do? And now, we got the next part of the story. They saved the universe, but now, okay, now the epilogue. What are we gonna do now? Um, well, we gotta try to save the, the, the Empress, who's all, like, jacked up. Um, uh, they're able to do that, because Saloon, I think, basically sacrificed himself, but then got reincarnated into this, like, you know, Dalai Lama type character, and says, okay, we gotta do this Theta Dream. And if we all do the Theta Dream, everything's a-okay. We have to do it, though, within a couple days. Everyone's got to be in this little trance. So that's his new mission, is to figure that out. And did you notice something? We went back to the old format with gutters and everything. Huh. It's very fascinating. I really want to know about what's going on with these page, page layouts. It's very different. Um, some of this, I was saying, the art, I feel like the art gets a little bit weaker in certain spots. This is great, though. I know it's blasphemous to say. 
Of course, now he's back on this planet and he's gonna go to the homeo whore because that's what he's all about, dude. He's all about like the carnal delights. The car, I mean, that's, I think the story is like, we are John DeFool, we are, you know, trying to rid our human side. And now he's going to these places where he was before to kind of like see where it's at. He tries to be this prophet again as he was before. He goes back to the, um, the, Spreading his seed with the the queen deal. Um, he goes to kind of like all these little spots. The queen, of course, is still pissed at him. They find out that he is the sire of those of all those people because he's got a belly button and no one else had a belly button. They all came out of eggs. Because the queen kind of like hatches eggs. It's kind of it's it's hard to explain. It's, it's weird. Uh, she gets convinced by the bird that's like, okay, you know what? You don't really hate him. You loved the Ankal, which was in him. That's what you loved. And she's like, oh, you're right. I don't hate you. Release him. And they're like, okay, mom, we'll release you. You're okay, dude. So he gets back. There's some great images here, though. More meditating. They get in the little deal. With their meditation, they're able to go through these dreams. I don't know if you remember, but at one point early on, John uh, John DeFool like faced his id and these different like aspects of his personality. They do the same, but they kind of are demonstrated outwardly, right? So she's got the six hands. He becomes more of a werewolf dog. He gets paralyzed by his robotic ear, and so. And John DeFool's like, dude, I already faced that. Don't don't go through these, like, you're kind of like freaking out of your the evil side of you. Just let it go. Uh, he says, let it go, dude. And so they let it go, and they're able to like, oh, we're, we're like Zen masters now. Again, it's shedding, it's shedding all those, like, imperfections. I think that's part of what he's, what he's saying. And uh, he goes, he meditates, he crosses over to the next level. Um, it gets very ethereal here. He meets the creator. Not necessarily God. They call it Or. But it's it's godlike. And uh, and then we go into some like 2001 kind of imagery. We're at the end of that. We have the 2001 baby. And he gets reincarnated. And boom. He's back at the beginning I must remember. That was the whole thing. I must remember, I must remember, I must remember. So he goes back and repeats it. So the idea is that you're repeating your life again, now with more knowledge or experience or understanding of life. And so hopefully now, the second time around, he will have that knowledge. He won't just be some homeo whore you know, addict, he'll be, you know, the master of his domain and make better choices and perhaps love and be more pure or what have you. I mean, that's what I'm pulling from it, but I could not even be hitting a target. <laughs> that's what I pulled from it. Um, it's 45 bucks. It is visually fascinating. It's over 300 pages. It's great. It's great. After all that's been said and done, it's a great book. Um, I said my piece on it. There you go. What do you think? You tell me. You tell me what you think. What do you like the most? What do you don't like? What do you think Mobius' best work is? What do you think Khodorovsky's best work is? I want to hear it. I want to thank you for watching. Thank you for subscribing. Check out my Patreon. If you want to help me out, go look at it on Patreon. You don't even got to give me money. Just go look at it. Just go look at it. Tell me what you think. Um, thanks for watching. And as always, tell your story. Go, go out in the world and tell your story. However you want to do it. Go out there. If you want to make a comic book, you want to make a movie, you want to just write in your journal, go tell your story. Because you are important. Boom, 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 boom. And the more you know, the like star goes. Okay, thanks guys.